Okay, thank you. Thank you first of all for inviting me here. I'm Jyoti, uh, I'm from Italy and I'm uh, a plant-based chef. I, I, my focus is mostly on, on food, in a plant-based food that can be really delicious for everybody, of course, and also healthy. That's why that I'm studied for a long time macrobiotic, I'm still studying. And what was uh, really passionate me about macrobiotic is, is uh, the energy of food. Energy of food and uh, our macrobiotic uh, teach us uh, that uh, traditional food is really, really good for us. It's probably the most healthy food. That's why that, uh, today I want to talk about some Italian dish and uh, that uh, they are not really the typical one that you can imagine you know, like lasagne <laughs> or, uh, or to, uh, pasta with tomato sauce, uh, this kind of food. But uh, they are typical food from some, uh, some region. Uh, so um, I take a plate from the North Italy, one from the Middle Italy and another one from the South Italy. So let's start with the, the one from the South Italy, that it's a, a kind of cake, uh, not a cake, sorry, a cookies. It's a traditional cookies that uh, usually they made in, uh, during the Christmas, Christmas time. And for me it was amazing, amazing because it's a traditional recipe, but there isn't any butter, any eggs, there is no oil, uh, and the, sweet, the sweetener was honey. I changed it now with uh, rice malt. But it was amazing because I didn't change uh, at all the right recipe to make it uh, like plain based, but it was naturally in this way. So let's start with this one. And uh, I have, uh, maybe later in the chat, I can send you uh, a to the recipe. Uh, so in this uh, bowl, I have the uh, sunflower, uh, almond flour with flour, almond flour, and a little bit of cacao. Usually I see that uh, uh, they use the cacao and spice mostly uh, for the cake, that for the cake, for the dessert, that was for really special occasion, so during the Christmas. So they use uh, a lot of almond, so we have these uh, three three ingredients, three flour, like uh, a little bit of cocoa, uh, wheat flour and almond. And then they use a lot of uh, like rich food, like they use uh, usually ham, almond, I already cut it as this almond, but can be also uh, hazelnut or nuts or this kind of food. And uh, they use uh, usually, they added also some dry resin, of course, uh, they choose during the Christmas time all the rich food for uh, this recipe. So I use a little bit of raisin. And uh, as I, take, I told you, uh, can you see me? It's better like this, mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't, as I told you, uh, they usually use uh, some spice, but they choose always uh, the more young spice, the warm one, like uh, uh, cinnamon, like cloves or nutmeg. And here I have just a little bit of uh, mixed, uh, I already prepared it, uh, spice. Uh, with, so with this kind of um, spice that I already told you. And so I use a little bit of this. Um, and a pinch of salt. And uh, a lot usually of something that uh, can make this cake a little bit also fresh. So they use the usually orange or the lemon peel. But during the Christmas time was most of all orange because the first orange comes in Italy. So was uh, usually was choose the orange. Jyoti, what is the name of this dish that you're making? What dish is this? Uh, okay, it's a traditional uh, cookies and the name is Mustaccioli. I will write you. Okay. Uh, it's really typical only during Christmas time. Usually you cannot find it uh, in uh, the, other per uh, the other season. 
And usually every family I work as a, um, a recite, so maybe someone uh, put inside or so maybe some like a, um, a tablespoon of jam, like apricot jam or this kind of food. I mean, uh, all the stuff that uh, can make this, this uh, cookie more rich for the period. And uh, what was interesting, it was also the kind of uh, baking the powder that is usually used. Because they usually use the ammonia for sweet. I don't know if you know it, but is ammonia for sweet is not anymore so much used. You can find it also in uh, the very um, traditional uh, cookies and it's most, most of all used for uh, cookies and it's really good because it makes the cookies a little bit more crunchy and it's good because there is not oil and usually we can make cookie crunchy with butter with oil and this kind of things but this is good for this reason and there is another reason uh, it's because uh, when uh, we cook it in the oven all the ammonia evaporate, so it uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't remain in the cake. Uh, this is also really good for uh, our, uh, our cake or cookies. I think you can move the camera just a little bit and we can still see the bowl and also see you. No, the oh, other ah, direction. okay. Yeah, like it. that's okay. good, yeah, that's good. I just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> now I'm start, I I always love to use my hand to cook and to to make dough. So I'm using my hand to mix everything. I I put a, uh, I soak the, the dry resin before to use it. So I uh, I put some water from the dry resin here in the in my bowl. And now we need the rice meal, rice meal. And I make my dough with some water, just a little bit of water. So I don't use any milk. Uh, and also in the traditional one, they don't use milk at all. As I told you, no eggs, no milk, no butter, and so. It will be a little bit sticky. If you want, you can leave it for half hour, but if you are in a hurry up, like like us now, because we want to bake it now. Uh, we can also work it with a little bit of flour. And 
and the dough is really gross, gross. So so we don't work it too much. Let's wash my hands and be kind. <coughs> I make just a small portion. These biscuits usually are big enough <laughs> because it's like everything that is traditional. They usually they, they usually don't care too much about the shape, but the what is inside. So there was a, enough thick. So Judy, can you review? Uh, mm -hmm. You've got you've got almond flour. And you've yeah. got wheat flour yeah. and salt and baking cocoa. soda. And what else? Cocoa. At the beginning, it was cocoa. The powder right. Was right. Wheat flour, almond flour, cocoa, a little bit, a little pinch of salt. And there was the mixed spice, uh, orange peel, and then uh, dry resin, almond, and the use of malt and not honey. Right. OK. I cut some little shape. I cut it big because usually the size is really big. This is not uh, like the original one, it's biggest usually. <laughs> so Just to use a little bit of more flour. And then I go to the to bake it in the oven for about 20 minutes or 25 minutes. Uh, the temperature is about uh, 180 degrees. And they, um, after that, usually what we make is to cover it with a little bit of chocolate if you like. But first we bake it. Then, when to, I want to introduce you uh, to another very simple recipe that usually we make in the, uh, like in Tuscany, mostly in Tuscany and uh, in, um, uh, in uh, Liguria, and is the um, chickpeas cake. It's a very simple, uh, traditional dish. Uh, that is very, really good uh, to uh, like for lunch or uh, like I use it for snack or sometime for breakfast. And it's really, really easy because you have just to make a dough with chickpeas. And usually what we do is to have uh, uh, chick uh, sorry, with chickpeas flour. And usually we use like uh, um, one cup of chickpeas flour about three cups of water. I just use a little bit now to show you, but I already prepared mine. Okay, I have already prepared, prepared mine because tradi traditionally, um, okay. 
traditionally uh, we ne we let sit the this butter for at least 12 hours so overnight at least and this is really good because uh, the taste of chickpeas uh, uh, became more mild it's more it became more sweet but most most of all um, it's very good um, because uh, you don't have any abdominal bloating or this kind of stuff because during this sitting in the chickpeas floor probably i think that the enzymes start to eat uh, a lot of fiber of the, of the chickpeas floor it's like when we saw chickpeas before cooking it it's something similar so it's really important usually to let it sit for at least 12 hours. Traditionally, we make it in the evening for the day, uh, for the day after. But it's really good this story because people that um, make uh, uh, traditionally this dish every day, because maybe uh, you are a kind of bakery where you sell it, in the traditional day, prepare this butter the day before, and the day after in the morning they use a uh, use all the butter but they keep a little bit and from this they start another butter and in my opinion this is a kind of starter i mean and you can have also some bacteria that start to digest better the floor so it's really 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 good if you make it every day you can do it or if as for some time for me is not really in the traditional way, but for me, for, for instance, I have a little bit of sorbo. Maybe I add a little bit of sorbo or uh, water from sauerkraut and I leave it, I leave it overnight and then uh, it became more, uh, uh, we can digest, digest, digest better this, uh, this food. I will show you the real butter. <laughs> This is an overnight butter. You can see we have uh, only water in the top, and the, because of the flour, the flour after many hours sit on the bowl. So now I mix it, and usually um, at this time we can add our salt and. Uh, we put in this butter some oil. And if we like, we can use some. Oh, yeah. And over here. If we like, we can use some like uh, oregano or some other herbs like sage or rosemary and this or thyme. I'm going to use some thyme, some uh, rosemary, sorry. The traditional one was only with herbs and chickpeas flour, but today, um we can find it also with vegetables inside uh i really like the simple one but sometimes i mix some vegetables together and then i i use it um, for instance now because when i use oven i like to use everything to cook many things in the oven so maybe we can make some like onion with uh cheto balsamico and so we can uh, cook everything together in a different point box. So uh, I really love this uh, cake, chickpeas cake, when it is thin, not too thick. So I usually and uh, it cook very fast. So. I don't know if uh, you can see it, but anyway, I think it's uh, uh, about uh, five millimeter. I think I think it's about five millimeter, no more. 
Now, I wait a little bit because uh, I want the oven to be a little bit more high, like 200 degrees for this cake. So I wait a little bit and then I will uh, bake it. But in the meanwhile, I will prepare also some onion. To me, it's the faster I will cut it in small pieces. Also in this case, when we make uh, onion with a, can, a little bit of uh, balsamic vinegar, vinegar, we also like sometimes to use some, this is balsamic vinegar. I use a little bit of oil. And I had also a bay leaf, so I just use one. And uh, also here we like sometimes to add some spice like cinnamon. And cloves. Jody, this is wonderful. You'll be yeah. sending us, you'll send us all these recipes? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of good, course. Good, good. Yeah, good. I think this is quite simple, but yeah, if you want, I can send also this one. Please. I a pinch of salt and I put a little bit of water because I don't want the I want to feel free to forget it in the water in the uh, in the oven without burning. So I, I put a little bit of water on the bottom. Okay, um, this can go in the oven with the beef, with the cookies. This is not a problem, so I will put it in the oven. Okay, I clean a little bit and I will do that. Okay. With the next recipe, I thought, as I told you, um, this, this dish, this uh, chickpeas cake, is called in Italy cecina. And uh, as I told you, it's most typical, like in Tuscany, we use it a lot in, Tus in Tuscany. And uh, as I told you, uh, I chose also another uh, recipe that came from the north. And uh, usually it's very common in uh, Trentino Alto Adige, so more close to the mountain. And I choose a, a kind of pasta that we make now, that is called pizzoccheri, and it's made with um, buckwheat flour. So it's very nice to find that we change the place uh, and we change the, the main ingredients. So we know that the buckwheat is very common in uh, the cold place. We cannot find it here in Italy, in Sicily. <laughs> I mean, uh, we have more almond and this kind of stuff, orange and this thing. But in the north, in the North Italy, in Trentino, we have this kind of dish that we usually we make, and I make mostly in the winter time. And uh, it's made, it's this pasta. Uh, we make now together, it's very easy. And uh, we cook it with a lot of vegetable. Usually green vegetable are usually more uh, um, winter vegetables like cabbage or kale. Uh, so now we start. That's why. Okay, this 
stereotype of speed soccer. This is a pasta that we make. I already have here the flour. flour. This is a 150 gram of flour. 100 are um, is uh, buckwheat flour. See, 100, sorry, it's buckwheat, buckwheat flour. And uh, uh, 500 is wheat flour. So I mix everything together. And uh, I need uh, to work with this uh, dough. I need uh, really um, warm water, better hot water, not cold water. So here I have my cold water. And usually, just to know, let, me, let you know, when we make pasta in Italy, uh, traditional pasta with no eggs, we usually about um, the um, for one um, one cup of flour we use a half cup of water. So this is hot water, as I told you. Okay, I think it's enough. And I start first at the beginning, I use a, a spoon because it's very hot. And then we, we go with the hand. Also, if you use it, you see that the floor is still dry. It's better not to not to use more water until we are sure that uh, we we uh, we use the whole water inside. So I don't use water and continue to. Though now it's warmer, so you can work with it easily. Okay. Water was enough, as you can see. I work a little bit with this dough, and uh, usually I try to use it uh, almost immediately because when it's still a little bit warmer, you can work better. In this case, when we uh, we have buckwheat. I really love to make uh, pasta by myself. It's a different word. It's completely different from the one that you can buy. Okay. You can see I can work with this dough. It's still a little bit warm. And now I go to to make my pasta. use a little bit of floor on the desk and uh, just to help yourself to make the shape. And with a stick. Okay. 
start to work the pasta. Use a little bit of flour, but really uh, not too much. You need just a little bit because if it's too much, uh, the, at the end of the pasta is not really good. I think it's enough. And I think probably it's one, two milliliter, millimeter. No. I use a cutter to be more fast. Use a little bit of flour. and then you open it. You go gently now because you don't want to break everything. Anyway, we don't want tagliatelle in this case, so we open it. And we cut again, like here and here. Yes, I think it's enough. Then I use some flour. And so I mix it a little bit, but always gently. You put some flour so start to dry up a little bit. My oven is calling me. Okay. Five minutes more and I'm fine. Okay. So this size of pasta, you can see it's like this, made with buckwheat. This is what we call it uh, grand, uh, pizzocchi. And usually we make this kind of pasta in winter. As I told you, it's more popular in the mountain and in the North Italy. We make it in, in uh, winter and uh, we make it with some vegetable. Now we are going also to make this uh, the recipe for this pasta. Because I put some flour here, they can stay and they don't become too much sticky. I really wish you can touch it <laughs> because it's not sticky and you can really uh, use it, but always gentle because uh, it's, uh, um, most of, of the flour is buckwheat. And so there is no eggs, there is a low gluten, so it's not so plastic. So we must be always careful uh, with this kind of pasta. Is that the reason that you cut it in short pieces? 
Yeah, usually, yes, we cannot make tagliatelle with this kind of dough because it's not elastic. We need the, uh, otherwise we need the ice. So usually they are always in a short piece. Yeah, this is for sure. Yeah, yeah otherwise it's uh, really difficult. It's the pasta sobe italiana. <laughs> I mean, this kind of pasta. Yeah, so for me, it was very nice when I studied macrobiotic, uh, macrobiotic and yeah, knew about fat meat uh, and uh, pasta soba, this kind of food. I say, oh, wow, my God, but we have pizza okay, in Italy, in the North yeah, Italy. In the place that were are uh, very cold, uh, very um, cold. Um, usually, uh, when you go to sky, it's easy that you can find uh, this kind of dish, for instance, because uh, it's really typical in that place. So, I go to my cookies so I can show you. Uh, Okay, I also make the, the chickpeas floor now. So uh, now our chickpeas, uh, our chickpeas cake is in the oven. These are the biscuits. They are still hot. So. This is more or less how it came. And uh, when they are cold, usually, um, we uh, cover it with some dark chocolate. I can show you some that are ready made. They usually have at home this kind of cookies during the winter time. And we cover it with some chocolate. Um, I found a, uh, a dark chocolate with no sugar and um, I melted it with a little bit of maple syrup, just a little bit to, because it was really difficult to, for me this 100% and then I covered it and it's, in my opinion, it's delicious. <laughs> uh, anyway, if we have time later, we can do also the cover with the chocolate. It's, this is not a problem. Now, we have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> Someone is writing. Um, if it's possible to use only buckwheat flour without wheat flour. Okay, I tried to only with, with buckwheat, buckwheat flour. It's possible, but it's very difficult because it's really easy to break it. Yeah, I tried to make a gluten-free pasta. And if you use only buckwheat uh, uh, flour, it's very, very important to use a really hot water because with hot water, the starch from uh, buckwheat come out. It work like um, to stick to uh, together the flour. So it's an help for the, uh, for the, the pasta. Uh, usually, I make uh, uh, with a little bit of wet flour because it's more easy and handle uh, because I don't have problem with the gluten, so I decided at the end to use this kind of recycle. You can find many recycles sometimes with also more wheat, wheat flour. I like this kind of uh, recycle, 100 gram flour and 50 uh, buckwheat flour, 50 gram uh, wheat flour. So now uh, I will move to the vegetable. <laughs> I move also the, yeah, so it's more easy for me. Okay, so uh, we are going to prepare our, our pasta, our pizzoccheri. And um, 
and we, uh, the recipe is very simple because we usually we prepare water with salt to cook pasta and we cook pasta also with vegetables. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I usually make something like this, that uh, first I put pasta, then uh, I put first uh, the cabbage because uh, I, want, I don't want to cook too much uh, the green leaves and the vegetables, so I leave cabbage or kale for uh, a couple of minutes, like two minutes, and uh, if I use uh, uh, spinach or uh, really tender green leaf uh, like today. I put uh, this leaf uh, only at, at the end so they stay just uh, in the hot in the boiled water uh, just for a uh, few seconds just to cook just a little bit not too much and uh, I usually uh, actually now today they use uh, to cook this pasta with a lot of cheese definitely too much for me, a good idea always to stay in this in this season and in this uh, tuned with the, this recycle. I usually add some oil that um, I make. Uh, uh, I cook slowly with some herbs like sage or thyme and uh, some nuts at the end. So just to make the dish more complete. So let's start. Okay. I use this one, cast iron uh, disc, to, to cook uh, slowly the oil because I don't want that uh, the oil uh, boil. I want that it stay between uh, 70, 80 degrees. So I put some. Stage. And if you, have, if you have it, I really love also time for this dish. If you want, you can prepare this oil uh, before in advance, and you can also store it for more cycle because it's just uh, a very uh, flower at the oil. As well, it's like this. I just use something time. And today I use so as I told you some cabbage and I have some kale and spinach. So we use uh, I prepare this page for now. Now I'm going to prepare just one portion. So There is some kale. I use it just two vegetables for one portion, as I told you, so I, I just put apart some spinach for the last moment. And I 
prefer to make walnut. Uh, if you want, you can um, you can cut it with your knife, or you can break it with, break it with a mixer as you like. I prefer I prefer a knife. We have also our hazelnut. I don't like it usually to roast the hazelnut because um, um, for uh, because usually I use a lot of hazelnut because I am vegan and so I use a lot of this for uh, omega three. So I usually don't roast it because I don't want to lose too much omega three. So usually I use like this. And I put it at the hand on the on, on, on the oil uh, when it's already cooked. Okay, we uh, wait to boil the water. It's almost boiling, and it's time for salt. And when it's boiled, we are, we are going to put our pasta. But always when it's boiling, when it's boiling. Our pasta, it's a handmade pasta, so we don't have a fixed time. Uh, we don't know why it's cooking five minutes. It's more or less. I guess uh, that this kind of pasta we cook in five minutes, more or less. So we remove it with this idea. Just one minute more. I go to check our chickpeas cake. Okay, and now it's boiling, so I put some pasta. This is one portion. Okay, so I let it work like two minutes and a half, three minutes, and then I will have the cabbage and kale. If you have any questions, this is a good moment because I just I have just to manage everything here around. So <laughs> it's okay, you're welcome. Mind me. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is a traditional uh, vinegar that a friend of mine make. So I cannot say the I I'm very uh, I really love to look for ingredients, for traditional ingredients from the producer. So I have some friend that produce uh, vegetable, other one that produce flour, like, I don't know, I show you this flour is made, for instance, in Sicily, and the medical for us also, they put my name inside, <laughs> like the kitchen is the name, like my brand, because they know me. And I always, when I can, I try to, to look for a good ingredient directly straight to the producer. Uh, so um, this is a friend of mine. And uh, sometimes we make some uh, 
cooking class about fermentation together. So it's him that make this wine and vinegar. You cannot find in the supermarket usually. Okay, everything is under control. Hmm. The pasta is, I sometimes check the pasta when it is uh, homemade. So I just uh, taste it with my finger to see if it's soft enough or not. Time it is. It's now time for cabbage. And kale. The more hard, anyway, the more hard leaf that we may cook just two minutes. I usually, usually, uh, if you know the good rule to cook pasta, uh, to have a good pasta in Italy, we usually cook pasta in a lot of water because the pasta cook better. But in this case, I don't use too much water because I, at the end I cook also vegetable, vegetable together. So I don't want to lose everything in that product. Broth. Also, if, we, if you want, you can also recycle this broth anyway, because uh, in the last, you don't lose too much for the vegetable because uh, we leave it just a couple of minutes inside. But if you want, you can recycle it uh, to make a bro uh, broth, a, a, a soup or something like that. Okay, uh, our oil is almost ready. Uh, we can keep it for longer time if we are uh, up around 70, 80 degree uh, of temperature. Um, so it, uh, the oil became more flour, uh, more um, uh, taste more about uh, with the flour of herbs, but. Uh, in this case, we stop here. So after we can use it to, to for our pasta. Uh, this soil is because I make a little bit more of oil because uh, um, I can keep it as I told you. I can keep it for more dish. So okay. it's too much for this portion, so I I use less in this case. So I store the oil, I leave it a little bit, it's like one spoon of oil. Now I put inside my spinach or any green leaves that is tender and stopped cooking now. I stop the fire, I stop the fire. I put some, now also the fire in the oil, in, under the oil is stopped, so it's which a lot. So I put some nuts and drain my water, my pasta, it's ready. When we finish to cook it, also the vegetables are cooked, but they're still green, so we don't overcook it. Then I, I put them here. The pan is still very hot, so it's okay for the pasta, but there is no fire. And I, as you can see, usually, traditionally, we use a lot of vegetables. So there is almost half pasta and half vegetable. And I really love it. I usually, when I make it, it's my main dish. 
I just use some salad together and it's now. Jyoti, we have about a minute left. Yeah. That's okay. okay. This is about our pasta. Ah, brava. Okay. And we check if the cake, the chickpeas cake, it's, it's fine. This is our chickpeas cake. It's quite fine. No? It can be a little bit more brown, but it's okay like this. And usually we can cut in slice uh, and to serve with uh, our for, with our vegetable like onion. Let me take it. You can see also how our onion are mm -hmm. ready. Mm -hmm. They are well, well cooked, so soft. And we can use on the top of our, our cake to serve with it. And uh, about our uh, cookies, as I told you, we can cover it with chocolate as you like. And mm -hmm. I suggest you to wait and don't to use it uh, the first day but uh, the day after it's much much better <laughs> i think for the moment we can stop here because i think you you understand but if you have any question please tell me this is fantastic this is you've done a masterful job we really appreciate it you've done excellent thank you really. just a taste of italy <laughs> brava brava very good <laughs> thank you very much